So I've been using the new 15 inch M2 MacBook Air as my daily driver for a while now. And I think it could actually be the best laptop you can buy right now, period. But it also has some issues that you should consider before buying one. Now the biggest selling point of this particular laptop is of course the form factor. I mean, most of you seem to agree that bigger is always better. Nice. But up until the 15 inch Air was released, I mean, your only other similarly sized system was the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which weighs a ton and also costs a small fortune. The 15 inch MacBook Air on the other hand is packed into a super thin and lightweight chassis, but it also doesn't compromise on screen size that much when compared to the 16 inch Pro. Now the advantages of this are, I mean, pretty obvious. It doesn't weigh that much, slips into your bag easily, and you still get a pretty big screen relative to other MacBooks, especially the much smaller 13 inch M2 MacBook Air. What is this? A center for ants? Now comparing it to the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air with the XL test, you can see just how much more you can fit on the 15 inches screen, highlighted in blue. Same with even the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I mean, there is a noticeable difference here. Also, if you tend to split view apps and have them side by side, it's much more comfortable on a 15 inch screen as well. Now, are these extra two inches really worth the compromise in price and portability when compared to the smaller 13 inch MacBook Air? Well, in my opinion, it is. 13 inch screens can feel really restricted at times, even if you use virtual desktops and switch between them. Now I'm enjoying the 15 inch screen because it allows more flexibility when I'm working or consuming content. There's less virtual scrolling on web pages, Word documents or sideways scrolling for Notion or Excel tables, for example. Movies look great on a larger screen. And I just feel like I can get more done when I'm away from my desk setup with my external monitor. And I think you really need to ask yourself a question here when you're actually in the market for a new laptop. How portable do I actually need my laptop to be? Now, personally, I no longer go to university and my job isn't on the road. Sure, I do take my laptop while traveling and use it in airports, hotels, and on planes, for example, but that consists of maybe 5% of my total usage. The rest of the time, it's on a desk or on my lap while I'm sitting on the couch. The ultra portability of the smaller 13-inch Air just isn't something that I can take full advantage of. You know what I do take full advantage of 100% of the time? That 15 inches of screen real estate. So it is a trade-off that depends on how you actually want to use the laptop. Now, just before we get into the next topic, a quick word from the sponsor for this section of the video. Bandwork Apple Watch bands combine luxury and durability. The Stockholm Vintage Tan Band is compatible and seamlessly integrates with all Apple Watch models. It even comes with color matching adapters and clasps. Each band is crafted to achieve a vintage aesthetic through a hand brushing process. Plus, you can get a full product set to match your tech. Here is the stainless steel band milled in Germany. Each of the 112 components is milled for several hours with an accuracy of 0.01 millimeters. The link bracelet is crafted from corrosion resistant 316L stainless steel alloy, making it a perfect fit whether you're wearing a suit or hitting the golf course. And don't worry if your hand finished band gets a bit scuffed after a few years. It can be restored to new condition with some polishing. Plus each band is beautifully gift wrapped in a wooden box. So get your band work band now and receive a free leather care balm by using the link in the description down below. Okay, getting back to the 15 inch air. Quick side note before moving on, if you are someone who uses your laptop with external monitors, like I do, still, even three years after Apple Silicon was first released, you cannot use more than one external monitor with these entry-level Apple Silicon chips. Now, this isn't a huge deal, and I admit there's probably only a few of you out there that this applies to, but it is an annoying limitation nonetheless. 
And the only solution is a display link dock, which isn't perfect or upgrading to the Pro Apple Silicon variants, like the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro, for example. Now, speaking of the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it is frequently compared with the 15 inch Air, especially once you upgrade the Air to what many consider the minimum standard, AKA 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. At that point, you're only a few hundred bucks away from the next model up, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is better in almost every way when compared to the 15 inch Air. And yeah, it's better because it's aimed at a pro target market who will be pushing a laptop much harder than the primarily web browsing, email writing, and other light tasks demographic of the MacBook Air lineup. Do those people really need a 16 core GPU? two fans, you know, ProMotion screen and extra ports? Probably not. And if you want to see a detailed breakdown and comparison of the two, I made a video on that topic and I'll link it down below. Now, all of that being said, check this out. An Apple certified refurbished 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro for just $15.39. It's identical in every way to the latest and greatest and more expensive M2 Pro MacBook Pro. Just slightly less performance due to the Apple Silicon inside being the previous M1 version and not M2. Now, that is a massive price difference and really mixes up the value proposition between the four options. And we've spoken about certified refurbished products on this channel before. It is almost identical to buying brand new. And I have no issue with either buying them myself which I have done, or recommending them to friends or colleagues. You can check out the exact refurbishment process yourself on Apple's website to see why. So is the 15 inch MacBook Air actually a good overall laptop? Well, again, after the 30 days I've been using this, remember that it is essentially the exact same as the 13 inch version. So the experience is gonna be almost identical. Just that this is a little bit more stretched out and you get an extra two inches of screen size. And also this comes with better speakers. And again, if you want a full 13 versus 15 inch comparison, check out this video that I made previously. But in a nutshell, again, you'll get the exact same incredible performance of the M2 chip that's more than powerful enough for almost any task you can throw at it. Multitasking with tons of apps and open browser tabs is a breeze apps load quickly, and I almost never get the spinning beach ball of death. But I'll tell you one thing. Oh, hang on a sec. What is that? I don't know, I was trying to do something. You can even do some 4K video editing and other slightly more intensive tasks in a pinch. Although, like I said, in a pinch. Remember, this bad boy does not have a fan, so it won't perform anywhere near as well as the more pro-oriented MacBooks can. That also means no fan noise, ever. You don't need to worry about leaving it sitting on a bed or couch and having no ventilation. And less moving parts equals less internal dust and less chance of part failure. Not to mention how insanely thin the chassis is. I mean, it just feels so weird when you're actually holding this thing in your hand. It's almost like it's a piece of sheet metal. It's that thin. But the value of the 15 inch air really starts to get interesting once you take a look at the competition, right? Primarily Windows laptops. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some really thin and portable and good Windows laptops out there. And often they are cheaper than their Mac equivalents as well. But do they have incredible battery life that lasts for 12 hours plus, no fan, super thin, solid aluminum chassis with great build quality and very good performance. But I think the biggest turnoff for the 15 inch MacBook Air for non MacBook users is that it's a Mac, right? And it comes with all the common negatives of a Mac. For example, you cannot upgrade or repair anything. It's all soldered. Uh, you're also locked into Mac OS. Obviously you can virtualize Windows, but it's not the same thing as running it natively. And generally the pricing is more premium than their Windows counterparts. But those are really the only drawbacks. And if you can get past those, 
it's going to make switching to Apple an easier decision, even for long time Windows users. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this machine. It finally bridges the gap between the 13 inch Air and the 16 inch Pro. And I think the price is pretty good too when compared with other similar offerings out there. But do yourself a favor and just stay away from the dark midnight color. I mean, unless you're the guy from the relaxing and YouTube channel and you just wear a pair of white gloves your whole life, uh, this thing is gonna look disgusting and really grubby after just a few hours of use and you'll be constantly cleaning it. So just, you know, space gray or silver, it might be boring. It's not as exciting as the latest and greatest color, but just, do yourself a favor. Anyway, thanks for watching and I guess I'll see you in 11 months for my one year later review.